Testimony in the Drew Peterson trial comes to a halt as defense attorneys ask the judge to declare a mistrial. They claim that a witness made statements that tainted the jury. The witness was a former neighbor of Peterson's alleged victim, Kathleen Savio. Well, the judge has now adjourned the trial for the day and will issue his decision regarding this mistrial motion tomorrow. ABC 7 Sarah Schulte joining us from the courthouse in Joliet with more on the developments today. Sarah? Well, Alan, from a legal standpoint, there has been nothing ordinary about the Drew Peterson case. For the second time in two days, the defense attorneys asked for a mistrial. Today's request was taken very seriously by the judge to the point where he blasted the prosecutors. No comment. For the first time, Drew Peterson's defense team had no comment as they left the courthouse for a lunch break right after asking the judge for a mistrial. The halt in this two-day-old trial is over a 38 caliber bullet. Peterson's lawyers objected to the line of questioning of a witness for the prosecution. Peterson's former neighbor, Thomas Pontarelli, testified that he found a bullet in his driveway. It was implied that Drew Peterson left it there as a threat. But prosecutors admitted to the judge they had no proof of that. Judge Edward Bermilla was angry, calling the state's tactics, quote, a low blow. Uh, I can't comment on the judge's comments, but uh, thank you. After a lunch break, Judge Vermilla said he would not issue a ruling, but gave Peterson's attorneys the option of throwing out Thomas Pontarelli's testimony. The defense asked for more time. The court was dismissed, and all sides will return tomorrow morning. Well, we don't even know if there's going to be a decision. We, we have to do the research and figure out what we want to do and what we're going to ask the judge to do. Peterson is on trial for killing his third wife, Kathleen Savio. Her death was originally ruled an accident. But Savio's case was reopened after the disappearance of Peterson's fourth wife, Stacy. Stacy Peterson's family spokesperson, Pamela Bosco, and prosecutors are confident the judge will not declare a mistrial. This judge is being very fair, and I think he's uh, very strong with his belief that this trial is important enough that we don't want a mistrial. We want to continue. We're confident that the trial will resume tomorrow morning. We have a full complement of witnesses to fill the day, and uh, hopefully we'll finish strong on Friday. As for Peterson, the former Bolingbroke police sergeant's lawyers say their client is in good spirits. So like always, he feels good. He's confident. Defense attorneys were anxious to get inside their offices here in Joliet. They're going to be spending the evening looking at case law. They have to give Judge Vermilla a good argument of why that testimony of that witness should be stricken and why there should still be a mistrial in this case. During all the proceedings, uh, defense attorney Joe Lopez tweeted out of the courtroom, this is a real mess. Live in Joliet, Sarah Schulte, ABC 7 News. Linda, back to you. All right, Sarah, thanks very much. Tweeting while the trial goes on. Well, joining us now is a Chicago attorney and jury consultant to discuss this mistrial motion today. Alan Turkheimer is with the law firm Zagnoli McAvoy Foley here in Chicago. So we're wondering, Tom Pontarelli, the, the witness, said uh, what he said was not an issue of hearsay. This was something that he was talking about. So what is it about what he said that the defense would say this tainted the jury? It shows Drew Peterson to be the type of person that is, is threatening and, and does ominous things and is not the kind of person that uh, you want to be near. And that just taints the perception of some jurors. The defense is saying that he would go to such extreme lengths that he would throw a bullet in someone's neighborhood or just in their yard to get a message across. And the issue here seems to be prosecutors can't prove that indeed that bullet, if it was left right. there, was left there by Drew Peterson. Right? Foundation has to be laid and, and a reasonable inference has to be drawn that Drew Peterson put that there and nobody can prove that. So the judge is saying to the prosecution, hey, you can't do this. Um, be careful. It was a pretty thorough, strong warning not to do this and get control of your witnesses. So what do you think in this case? Is this serious enough for the judge to declare a mistrial? I don't think so. If this happened over and over and there was a pattern of this occurring, mm -hmm. I would say it's more likely. And also, it's so early on in the case that I, jurors will be able to put this aside. There's another four weeks to go. And with everything that's happened in the first two days, a lot more is going to happen between now and the end of the trial. It looks like a long four weeks. Right. But, but let me ask you about that. You say jurors will be able to put this to, aside. Here are, here are situations where jurors obviously hear the testimony, and then they're told disregard that. Now, although they may not be able to actually use it in their deliberations, uh, do they disregard it? But they will be aware of it, and it could be something that's on their mind. But if anybody talks about it in deliberations, there will be one juror or several jurors saying, look, we can't talk about this. It's irrelevant. Let's go on. And jurors can focus on the task at hand. We saw it in Casey Anthony. They felt like she was guilty, and they wanted to convict her, but the evidence wasn't there. So they can compartmentalize. Is this um, the fault, if, if you would say that, of the prosecution to allow this kind of thing to happen two days in a row? There's, you know, Day two of the trial, this has happened twice. 
I'm not so sure. I'd have to see the actual transcript, but it seems like the prosecution needs a little better control of its witness, and it has to know that they're going to get an objection if something is introduced that was previously ruled inadmissible. So they need to be careful that this doesn't happen again, because if there's a pattern of it, the judge is not going to be happy. No, not at all. All right. No. Alan, appreciate recover. appreciate your insight very much into this. We'll see what happens. Yes. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Let's turn to some other news today. Supporters of Chick-fil-A CEO.